For more than five years, Saad Iqbal Madni was prisoner number 743 in Guantanamo Bay. The prize-winning reciter of the Quran claims he was threatened, abused and brutally tortured. His ordeal began soon after 9-11, during a visit to Indonesia. He says he was bundled onto a plane which took off from Jakarta and refueled in British territory, the island of Diego Garcia. He claims when he got to Egypt, interrogators used electric shocks. From there, he was transferred to Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan. He was moved again in March 2003 to join the hidden ranks in Guantanamo. The US Defense Department says detainees there are treated legally and humanely, and torture has never been used. Saad Iqbal Madni says he's living proof that it has. He was released in August 2008 and returned home to Pakistan. But more than two years on, he's still fighting for his freedom. Saad Magni, thank you for speaking with us. What happened to you when you arrived in Guantanamo Bay? So it was the 23rd March 2003 when I arrived in Guantanamo Bay. They stripped me naked in front of 40, 50 people uh, from military intelligence, US, including male, females. And uh, after that, they uh, hand, uh, they covered me with a uniform of uh, orange and uh, they handcuffs me, shackles me, legs, and they take me to the Oscar block. I was in Oscar 4 for uh, isolation for 30 days. It was a 6 by 4 metal cage. They not take me in, t in interrogation during these 30 days. After that, they moved me to Mike block. I was in Mike block when they took me first time into the interrogations. They said, we've been watching you since you left from Pakistan. You're not going to lie with us. We know everything about you because we've been follow up you since you left Pakistan. You have to be truthful with us. They asked me the question, was four people, was a black guy, was Americans, and was a Egyptian, uh, uh, was a Indonesian, Malaysian looking guy, and was a British guy. How do you know that one of them was British? He said, I'm from England, British. He said his voice accent for English also was known. British guy, he just asked me about Richard Reed. That's it. He said, if, if I have met Richard Reed, he was said like after you went to Indonesia, he come in to visit you in Indonesia also. He said that. I don't know. He interrogated me only about Richard Reed, and if I have any friend or anyone, I know him in England, in UK. <coughs> Other people, they ask me different questions about if I have married Osama bin Laden, if I went to Afghanistan, if I have any kind of relation with any terrorist groups, any uh, information about 9-11, any information about planning terrorism for the future, Al-Qaeda, and that's questions. I denied. Then they was very mad. They said, okay, if you're not going to accept, at least you met Osama bin Laden. They said, go ahead, accept you met Osama bin Laden, we forgive you, we forgive you. Yes, you did mistake and that's, that's fine. I said, how I admit something, I never did it. So, I said that was, that time was my, like, uh, start punish they start torture me in Guantanamo. The first torture I received, they put me, they put me in frequent flyer status. They kept me in frequent flyer status for six months. Well, the frequent flyer status means the detainee doesn't allow allowed to sleep. Every 20 minutes, every half an hour, 
the guards come and wake up the detainee they handcuff him the leg shackles him and they move him from camp to camp from cell to cell sometimes you are they put you in cell 1 and each block had 48 48 cells they uh, the first time they put you in cell 1 and, and the second time they move you back in 24 five cells last so you can walk if we try to take get a nap a little bit the guards come and they kick the doors yelling screaming cursing and only the base the this detainee not allowed to sleep during this uh, frequent flyer status i was suffering from my ear because the torture in indonesian airport i have I re realized in bagram air base i have a hole in my eardrum and that's got because they threw me against the wall after i was in frequent flyer status I was suffering from the pain and I can't sleep and was bleeding from my legs each time I go walk and they move me from camp to camp, cell to cells. And during that period in Guantanamo, Sa, did, did you ever think you would get out or did you give up hope? The way they was treat me, I was never hoping I going back alive in Pakistan. They really. Uh, the doctors over there, they said, in three months you're going to die because the infection is very close to your brain. Anytime you can have a stroke, that reason they consider me in life-threatening condition. What about physical ill-treatment in Guantanamo? Were there beatings in Guantanamo? Yes, the, uh, not the interrogators, but the guards, they, uh, several times they beat me by the kicking, kicking and uh, Earth team, they always send a Earth team. Earth team mean is a six or eight guards. They wear a helmet and they have a spray. They first do spray and they right away they come inside a cage and they beat and uh, handcuff, hand shackles from back and they be beat at that time. You made a suicide attempt in Guantanamo Bay. Tell me about that. Uh, I was have a white sheet. I hang that sheet in my top of cell and I tried to attempt a suicide with that sheet. But the guard caught me and they take me to the hospital. And a few days my neck was very hurting and it just stay like this. And after that they not stopped to torturing me they sent me to delta block delta block is is in camp one is another block you can call this a psychiatrist block also you can call this a second interrogation interrogators torture block what happened when they moved you to delta block <clears throat> they stripped me naked just allowed is the underwear six by four cage is a refrigerator metal. They put me inside that cage for six months. And I was without clothes and they turned on the air condition is very high and uh, they kept me over there they, for six months. There's no, nothing allowed be, beside the underwear. They, during this period, they take me to the interrogation and they said, okay, what's now you going to admit or not? I said no and I start in here a hungry strike because I was suffering too much and uh, I start a hungry strike and that time they start giving me a codeine and morphine as a painkiller. How, how difficult was it for you to get access to lawyers when you were in Guantanamo Bay? When I start hungry strike my, one of my uh, friend, uh, friends over there he was a detainee he told his lawyers he's going to die and that reason, they allowed, the court allowed my lawyers to see me one time visit because my life-threatening conditions. So that was the only visit you had? Yes. How do you feel about Americans and about the Americans who treated you this way in Guantanamo Bay? If I said, like, <clears throat> I am not angry Definitely, that's not a true. I, in my heart, definitely, I am angry because if I did something bad, 
and they punish me, this is okay because, you know, I did bad and I've been getting a punishment for that. But I have not did anything bad.